that's what that's that's why I make reference like that is because what they're teaching in Bible schools and seminaries are these doctrines that folk have come up with. And that's when they'll say, well, the last apostle, that's when it died. And that's not true because, first of all, and I want to remind people of this, when we use the word apostle, it's from the Greek word apostolos. What does it mean? It means a special messenger, a special angel sent to the church. But you came up, well, what you said really was acropos. How can you say you believe in fivefold ministry, but then you say all the apostles have died out? Either you believe in season four chapter or you don't. See, you know, and it's, it's like, <clears throat> yeah, so it's like, well, wait a minute. You're going to tell me you believe in an apostolic call? Well, you can't have an apostolic call unless it's the ministry. So, you, like you say, there's a duality. But you can't have duality. Because Jesus said to himself, what? You can't get water. Sweet and bitter water out of the same surface. Right. And, 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 and the old folks' term is you can't be talking out of both sides of your mouth, which means you're not talking about the same thing. Right. You know? Double speak. Yes, yeah, double speak. Or double minded. Yeah. Like yeah, it's double minded, but it's double speak yeah. because it's, you're still right. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says what? A double minded man is what? Unstable, Unstable in all his ways. So that's why I said it, you know, that's why I tell people, I said, well, you know, um, you're going by theology. Now, theology is simply the study of God. But what happens is, and I remind people again, this is still another branch of the view that is European. It's a European view of Christianity. That's where all it stems from. But when you when you check church history, here's what people don't realize. Jesus took those people who, by today's qualification, could not be an apostle, who could not be a bishop. Right. Because they only had one guy, well, two guys that were, you had Luke, who was a physician, yet you had a, you, you had the other guy who was a tax collector, and they were crooks. Mm -hmm. But he obviously was good with numbers. Yeah. So those were only two guys with degrees. The only people that had any real education, as far mm -hmm. people would say, is concerned. Paul was the most learned, and he wasn't the original. I'm the original twelve. Mm -hmm. was way later. Yeah, you know. And so the whole thing about it is, he was the most learned of the group of the original group. But remember. <coughs> There were other apostles spoken of, and I'm going to go into this more so. Because I'm going I'm to lay this, I'm going to lay this stuff down. Because um, what I want people to understand about this is, people get caught up in a whole bunch of ecclesiastical teaching. The Greek word ecclesia, which is I I I named my church the, the ecclesia of Greensboro at Greensboro for a purpose. That's what God gave me a long time ago. Because we go from Aramaic to Hebrew. Really, it went from Latin, which I studied in high school, to Greek to English. So the whole thing about it is if you study the foreign language, then you know about translation. Well, the word ecclesia means his called out ones, his church. So when I say the Ecclesia at Greensboro, I'm saying the church at Greensboro, which anytime you read in the, in the New Testament, book of Galatians, the epistle or the letter, because that's what epistle means, was to the church at Galatia, the Ecclesia at Galatia. Mm -hmm. you know, so the whole thing about it is I'm just taking the roots and just bringing it to four. I remind people, people miss this stuff because they don't know enough about it. And see, people get surprised because um, they think because they've been to a Bible school, they think I don't have any training at all. <laughs> but I, I got some Bible papers too. You know, and I think sometimes I surprise people 
when I start talking about certain things. Um, but I got a few degrees of myself. So the thing about it is, is if anybody wants to try to get into this, this theology and ecclesiastical thing, well, the word apostolic means a special messenger to the church. And you can't say that you can believe in the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and teacher, and not believe that God doesn't still have apostles. You don't tell me all of a sudden he does not have special messengers to the church. See, you can't have one without the other. So if folk want to go into that technically, no, you're going by what you were taught in the classroom. Which has residue of Roman papacy. Exactly. Like that's, you know, when we look at, you, know, you, you said it earlier, you mentioned the Western paradigm, but I think that, you know, like that's that has to be reemphasized because, unfortunately, people think Western paradigm is default. Yeah. It's like the Lord was telling me this this morning. This is similar uh, in that we're talking about God removing the Western paradigm from the church. A great deal of why all of this uh, Jewish teaching is going on in the body of Christ is to disrupt the Western paradigm. Like that's that's what that's what most that's what most Caucasian preachers, whenever they say it, like that's how they're using it. But I think, and like I said, this is this is similar. The, the common denominator is we're displacing the Western paradigm, but I'm being even more specific as as, as it pertains to white supremacy. Uh, what a lot of the white preachers don't mention, whether they are Jewish or whether the, you know what I'm saying they're just Caucasian, is that if you talk about a Jewish Jesus, that means you're not talking about a white Jesus. Yeah. To to mention to mention to to displace the Western paradigm also means to dispel the myth of white Jesus. And um I think that uh like I said, that that's that's similar. Like the common denominator was the Western thing with the, you know, what I'm saying get, getting back to just like the ecclesiastical piece and, you know, what I'm saying people getting into semantics about church titles and those kind of things. But the Lord was talking to me about that this morning. It's almost like you got to remind people of that uh, because see, everybody. It's funny how everything turns into a hashtag. It's trending now uh, in both black, white, yellow, purple, purple circles in the church to, to mention all of this Hebraic, Hebraic, that's the hashtag, hashtag mm -hmm. Hebraic, that's, that's hip right now. But very few people, especially the ones, especially a lot of, now some, some of the white ministers, I feel like they aren't led to talk about that. And it makes sense, you know what I'm saying? Because a, a, God's been raising a black folk to deal with this the entire time. It's just, they've been getting overlooked. But yeah, the Lord was just reminding me of that this morning. He was like, yeah, dog, like I got people talk. If we're going to talk about a Jewish Jesus, that means he wasn't a white Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's why I'm trying to emphasize to people that people in the body of Christ who want to say that it's, it's not important, that's a lie. It's very important because first, it, you get on social media and a whole lot of still plenty of black people my age, and certainly uh, my son's age and in between that don't want to serve Christ because they think he's white. Yeah. He's, he's been taught as being a white person, <clears throat> and that's erroneous. And you're going to have millions of people who are not going to make it because they say, well, he's a, he's a white God. They use a white God to, uh, for slavery. And we know white supremacy has got white folk thinking they're more like God because Jesus is white. Exactly. The Son of God was white, and I'm white. Right. So I must be a God. Right. <laughs> And so, and you know, it, it's just the truth of the matter. I just tell the truth as it is, and you know, I I make no no apologies, no reservations about it because it's true. Um, I, I can honestly say, uh, some of my coworkers when they saw me after watching my program, I know some been watching my program. They looked at me very different. They looked at me very very different because they know emphatically what I believe, and I'm reminding them. Jesus is not Caucasian. And it is important. We have to see him as he is. The Hebrews were an ethnic people. A real Jew is Semitic. Semitic people have dark skin. They have wavy or curly hair. This, this is a truism. But what's going on is folk have lied. And so you go to the table of nations. You go Back to Genesis, read stuff, read your Bible. 
Yeah, yeah but the problem is, folks ain't reading the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and you're right. People ain't reading their Bible, and then they're not looking stuff up because one of your greatest tools as a Christian, along with your Bible, <coughs> is that Strong's Concordance. Yeah, like that's that's gonna help you make sense of so much in the Bible because, like Pop said, you had the original Hebrew and Aramaic, then you had Koine Greek, then you had the Latin Vulgate. Then things were translated into the various uh, European languages, right? The beautiful thing about that Strong's Concordance is it gives you that Koine Greek and it gives you that Hebrew and Aramaic. So if you look it up, if you look up what I don't know, I've been studying the heart. So I looked it up in the Hebrew and I looked it up in the Greek. And it's like, yo, I can understand it in that Jesus lived. In, in Pal what we call Palestine, he lived in Palestine right after Alexander the Great had taken over and then the Roman Empire had taken over. Remember Herod and all of them? Those were Italians, right? So Jesus spoke the language of his day. More than likely, Jesus was able to speak Aramaic, uh, Hebrew, Greek, and probably some Latin. Because if Romans were, if he was living in a Roman occupied territory, he's probably he probably spoke some Latin because he had to, right? So the beautiful thing about that concordance is is that it's a bridge. It bridges the achievement gap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Between us and those original languages, and so we can understand stuff in the all that they did with the Amplified Bible was they just went with they just went with Strong's concordance and they put the definitions that are in the concordance they put it in the scripture that's how yeah. come it is called mm -hmm. the amplified bible and that's why i love it you know yeah which i still understand why bishop williams doesn't like it because he's a he's a very wordy and very well educated individual and he always talked about etymology and etymology means you're getting to the root the base of words mm -hmm. where they stem where they come from so when you get into the etymology then you find out oh this is where this where it comes from mm -hmm. You know, if I could say this too, it like goes back to something you said earlier, folks you put up earlier, like we're not, and when I say we, I'm talking about the body of Christ, like we're not trying to, I guess, dispel or expose the myth of white Jesus to say that we are the chosen people either. It's like, you know, going back to in the word where it says in the body of Christ in the church and the spirit, there's neither Jew nor Greek, Right. you know, that we're all one. You know, if there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, like, you know, we're trying to expose this myth of white Jesus so that we can expose the fact that, hey, here's the tactic that the devil's been using. Exactly. And, you know, it's not that this person, these people are better and these are worse or vice versa. It's that the devil has been using this tool. For so long in and he chose to use this to use race to get to screw so many other things up it was like you know in the body of christ if we're fitly joined together if one part of the body is jacked up the body is incomplete the body isn't functioning properly as it should right. you know if i'm the left elbow but you're the right foot if if my part is messed up then the body isn't whole if I, if this is broken the body isn't whole you know, it's just, it's like a cancer. It can start in one part, but because that one part is messed up, eventually, once that gets decayed enough and, and you know, diseased enough, it's going to inevitably spread, spread. to every facet of it. And and, uh, and speaking on that, on that issue of spread, you go around the world, Catholicism, not Christianity, Catholicism has been propagated into the entire world. And when you talk with people who come into contact with Catholicism, that's why they hate Christianity. It's like they they've been fed. It's almost like the apples that you get in that plastic pack at McDonald's versus getting a real apple out of out of an apple orchard. You know what I'm saying? They've been they've been handed this thing that's been processed and manufactured and man made and synthesized. And They've been eating this unhealthy thing. And, and most people, when you talk with anybody who has a gripe with Christianity, they think that they have a gripe with Christianity. But if you listen to their arguments, especially if they know anything about history, all of their historical gripes with Christianity are historical gripes with Catholicism. It's not with true Christianity, because if you know 
real church history. And this is why Pop has been stressing this from the jump, man. If you know any real Catholic church history, you know that the Catholics were killing the remnant. What the Bible says, there will always be a few people, few faithful people that were really trying to go after God. There were plenty of people, just, just with the issue of translating the Bible. Mm -hmm. Do you know that William Tyndale was burned at the stake? So God told him, look, man, there are, there are, there are hundreds of thousands uh, of English people. You know what I'm saying? I'll just say hundreds of thousands. I won't act like it was millions, right? There's a bunch of people that need to be able to read the Bible. And God says, William, you speak all them languages. Why don't you translate it into English? Well, God, you know they're gonna, they're probably gonna kill me. They're probably gonna attack me. Yeah, but it's kind of important that these people be able to read the Bible. You know that these people, are, you know that these these politicians and these church officials that they're working together, that they're corrupt, that they're tyrants. So I need you to do this. William Tyndale does that, and the church killed him. The church, the Catholic Church, persecuted him. So. Once again, when we really take a look into it, a, a, re a real sober, common sense look into Catholic Church history, we see, like what Jason was saying, somebody was worshiping the devil, somebody was friends with the devil, because there was a lot of devilish stuff going on, and, and, the, and the Bible says that he's the arch deceiver. If you look at how Satan attacked Eve, right, in the garden, he used the word of God. He used Christianity. Because remember, Jesus is Adam and Eve's savior too. You know what I'm saying? Jesus was Jesus was the lamb that was slain before the world was created. So he was Adam and Eve's savior too. Mm -hmm. So what did Jesus have, excuse me, what did Satan have to do to try to trick <coughs> the two Christians, Adam and Eve in the garden? He had to misuse Christianity. He had to misappropriate the word. Did God not when, say? Right. Whenever you fast forward to whenever Satan attacked Jesus after he fasted 40 days, mm -hmm. Satan had to quote the Bible. He had to quote Torah. So this, this particular attack, like what Jason was saying, this particular ruse that's used is really the oldest one in the book because Satan can't create. Satan has to take what God's already used and he has to manipulate that because he doesn't have the ability to create from nothing. My fault. No, 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 no. It's, no, I'm just saying I'm just thinking about you know, what you're saying, but really it's true. It, everything that you're saying is true. That's why people got to watch how the word is manipulated and recognize it because, <clears throat> again, logos rhema, logos rhema. Right. You can misuse the word of God and what? It becomes of none effect. Right. But when you use it in a proper perspective, it's right. Now, remember, like you said, Satan is the arch deceiver. Every time the devil opens his mouth, he's lying. <laughs> yeah, Every right. time he opens his mouth, he's lying. So what you got to do is, <coughs> but see, he don't have your senses exercised be able to discern between good and evil. Now you got a problem. And a lot of people don't have their senses exercised. Because we just, we want what we, what we want. We want you. <clears throat> we want you to be able to understand what the Word of God says. We want you to be able to understand how to grow, how to be nourished, how to nurture. Right now, this nation needs Christians who are willing to pray, fast, spend some time before God. Some folks some folk say, Terry, Terry, excuse me. Some folks will say, soak. Some folk would just say, lay before him. Regardless of terminology, we need somebody who's going to willing to spend some time before the Lord. <clears throat> Those of you who may, may be Christians today, but maybe you laughed at Christians 20, 30 years ago. <clears throat> Stuff we told y'all is coming to pass. You see it now. They're doing more and more so they can invoke martial law. You call them militarizing the police. But stuff is happening. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, no indictment for a policeman who killed somebody with the illegal chokehold. Eric Garner dies on the street in New York. He kept saying he couldn't breathe. Now, it's an illegal tactic. You're not supposed to use a chokehold. So now they're gonna say, well, he had respiratory disease and you know he was he was overweight. No, he died because somebody pressed his throat. Right. That wasn't supposed to do so. 
All this is a prelude. All y'all who laugh about Illuminati, Illuminati exists. God spoke to me almost 35 years ago. I was a young man, 27, about the Illuminati. And showed me all about what was going on. What you've heard about the New World Order, they're slowly, really just not as slow as it was, they're bringing it to fruition right before your eyes. And those of you who've been skeptics, y'all need to wake up. I'm going to say the same thing I said the other night, <laughs> excuse me, the other night <clears throat> about like um, the uh, like school days, Spike Lee movie. Wake up. Wake up. You better realize what time it is. It's time to start praying. It's time to start seeking God's face. We are in the days of Noah. My, I felt something go out when I said that. I felt virtue leave my body and go into this camera. This is real. This nation needs Christians. Do some praying. They got folk in the uproar. Guess what? The Illuminati won't uproar. They believe in order from chaos. They want chaos in the streets. They want people riled up. I saw this coming 20 years ago <clears throat> because the Lord showed it to me. I knew this stuff was coming. I'm watching it unfold. It's time for Christians to get on the stick. It's time for folks to stop talking about it and start praying. <laughs> I'm talking about for some results. If we don't, we're going to perish. We need some good Christian men and women. They're willing to do what's necessary because it's, it's crazy out here. It's worse than it was when I was 28, 29 years old. Mm -hmm. It's worse. It's much worse now. And it's not going to get better. My parents got married during the Depression. Not my grandparents. My parents got married during the Depression. And things are not going to get better. We're going to need the favor of God. We're going to need to be able to, to uh, do as it was when the widow was down to her last. Y'all can sit back and laugh at this stuff and mock it, but you better stop and think about it. Yes, it's good if you got the money that you can uh, buy up some food stuffs and some, and some water, but what about when that's about to run out? What you going to do? And there are people in this area here in, in, the, in, the, in the triad. They've shown them on TV. They're buying old buses, burning them on the ground. <clears throat> They're buying all sorts of uh, uh, facilities, mm -hmm. going on the ground, taking food and water. But how long is that going to last? Right. Now, I'm not telling people not to. They try to have something, but I don't, but how long is that going to last? The time's going to come when you have to believe in the miracle power of God for somebody to come and pray over and lay their hands on what you got or do as Jesus did with the uh, five loaves of two fishes. Bless it and then start distributing it. Now, I was talking about this when my, my son here was a little boy. I was reminding people of this. The time is y'all better start believing in the impossible. You know, it's not just praying for the sick and casting out devils, which we do. But we're going to have to start believing for, for uh, miracle supply. Um, I remember many, many years ago, and it was after I'd done some fasting and praying, your uncle came by here. And that's when he was driving that little bitty white truck. He had, I think he was running kind of low on money. And I told Dwight, I said, go, I said, go, go get some gas and, and put it, put in that uh, container. I don't know if it was a gallon or two gallons or whatnot. We have to ask him. He probably remembers the exact amount. I I'd been going through some fasting and praying at that time. I laid my hands on that gas and prayed. 
And your uncle put that gas in that truck before he left from here. He said that gas lasted a long time. Mm -hmm. But see, the whole thing about it, and this is how many people miss it. Fasting and praying takes you out of the natural. Now, my son put a few things on Facebook the other day. And if you if you uh, check out Facebook, you look at it. We talked about he talked about this was between the spirit and the soul. Spirit and soul are not the same. The world teaches that they are. If you look in the dictionary, they'll say they're synonymous. They're not. Um, when I was a student at East Carolina University, ECU, um, and I took a philosophy course, and I was so mad with the professor. He was chain smoking, which he wasn't supposed to be doing in the classroom, but he was chain smoking. What was his name? Frank Murphy? And uh, <clears throat> he was saying, I never had anybody to tell me, to tell me the difference between the spirit and the soul. And um, I got angry. I got angry because I was in a backsliding condition, didn't know enough Bible. But deep down inside, I knew they weren't the same. Mm -hmm. But I was angry because I could not articulate it. I'm trying to say <clears throat> yeah. All right. I'm about to bust over here, man. Got a word of knowledge. I was trying to wait to the end. Um, can I? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this sequel? This ain't letting up. <laughs> All right. Hey, y'all. Uh, uh, Okay, um, there's a young lady. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, you're 43 years old. Your name is Kimberly Meyer. Your husband's name is Dan, and you live, see, the Indiana or Illinois. I know it's for sure it's in the Midwest. You're 43 years old. Your name is Kimberly Meyer. You're a Caucasian female. You're about five four, and I don't know, maybe 145, 150 pounds. God is just giving me all these minute details so it'll make it undeniably clear. You have curly, long, uh, brown hair. It stops about right here. So it, the Lord is making it infallibly clear who you are. Anyway, the Lord has really been dealing with you. You've been waking up in the middle of the night and you've been studying this stuff. A lot of the, it started, the Lord was showing me this while uh, Q here was talking about the concordance. You've been looking up the Aramaic, the Hebrew, the Greek, and the Lord's been revealing a whole lot to you. And it's like, you've been feeling like you're about to bust because the Lord is revealing all this stuff. But because of the church you're in, and specifically because of your husband, you're bound. You feel like you're bound because the Lord is revealing all this stuff. But your husband is so tremendously conservative and he's so stuck and set in, in, in religion and tradition to the point to where you, okay, number one, I rebuke the spirit of depression right now in the name of Jesus, because that's what you're dealing with. That's that's exactly what you're dealing with, because it's like you don't know, you're not quite sure where to go. The Lord is revealing all his truth to you. He's uncovering so many different things, but yet and still, you're so faithful to Dan. Y'all been married 28 years. <laughs> You've been so faithful to him, and, and let's face it. Life is good. He makes about seventy five thousand a year. Um, you know, your kids, you know, y'all, they've gone off to college. Y'all doing good. You're comfortable. I get it. Well, I've never had that kind of lifestyle, but I can understand you're comfortable. You have everything you need, supposedly on the surface. But the Lord is also revealing to you that that stuff means nothing. And you're feeling that way. You don't really care about the money anymore. You don't care about, you know, the social status and all that other stuff, but you're so scared of bringing shame on your husband and what the, what is the family going to think? What is the church going to think? You know, all those other things. Um, the Lord was uh, bringing me back to the word today. I think it was Luke chapter 10. Either way, when he appointed, who, what, what was it, the 70, um, the other 70, it's like, you know, just go. Don't take a purse nor a script nor shoes or anything. Just go. That's what the Lord is telling you to do. He's going to give you instructions because you've been waking up every night between about 2 and 4 a.m. to study and to pray. That's your instruction time, and he's going to give you instructions on how to go about this and what to do, where to go, and all that stuff. But, um, okay, it's finally releasing now. But um, I had to go ahead and tell you that. Again, a review. Your name is Kimberly Meyer. Your husband's name is Dan. You're about five foot four. 
You have long brown, uh, long brown curly hair, and you're 43 years old. You live in the mid in the Midwest. Uh, let me see. I think that's about it. That's all I'm hearing right now. I just had to go ahead and release that, but yeah, I'm done. Hmm. Talking about a word of knowledge. Yeah. I'm over here. Yeah, the unction is on me. Yeah, no doubt about that. And I felt that um, it is funny though, but that, that happens a lot of times when God starts using me and starts priming other people around me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, Dan is 38. He just told me that. So, so that's a, that's always interesting though, uh, how that happens. All of a sudden, stuff starts starts flooding out. Um, Christians, <clears throat> you start talking about I was talking about the difference between the spirit and the soul. Soul is the will, intellect, and emotions, and a lot of times the enemy will play havoc on your soul. You can't really touch the spirit. The spirit is you. The real you, but if he gets in the soul and messes up the soul, but well, here's what happens: if the enemy can't get to you and possess you, he try to oppress you, and oppression is is depression, for one thing, or <clears throat> try to bring a spirit of domination, try to manipulate and control you. And even though you're saved, <laughs> you got these outside forces that are fighting you. You're not trying, living in victory. Yeah. Yeah, and you uh, start living that cycle of defeat the monster all talks about. So, and the enemy does so much to distract us and bring so many things around us that um, we have to really watch for that. But yeah, I remember sitting in class and I was so mad I couldn't, I couldn't delineate between the two. Can I give a quick yeah. delineation? Mm -hmm. Okay, so psychology, right? Sigmund Freud, the study of the human soul, he also equates it with the spirit. It's a bunch of bull because whenever you study the Greek, Koine Greek, the New Testament, they get the word psyche from the Greek word is used for the soul, which is suke, right? Yes. Okay. Like Pop said, the suke is comprised of the will, intellect, and emotions. Your spirit comes from the Greek word pneuma, you know what I'm saying, which means breath. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now we understand that the Holy Spirit, right? So the Hagios Numa, you know what I'm saying? Is the original spirit from where all spirits come from. Well, if we can understand that intellectually, guess what? There's a scripture that says that. The Bible says that God is the father of all spirits. Guess what? He also kind of owns the copyrights on souls because yep. he says in the Old Testament that all, all souls, souls are mine. mine. So <laughs> the, the part of you, the Lord's been talking to me. I told you he's talking to me about the heart earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I ain't going to go all the way into it, uh, but Hebrews 4 and 12 talks about how the word of God is sharp, it's alive, and it's powerful. It divides asunder uh, to, the, to the joints and to the marrow, uh, both soul and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The Lord was reminding me that the heart pumps two kinds of blood. It pumps blue blood and it pumps red blood. You know what I'm saying? And one kind of blood which is the blue blood, uh, or the darker blood, really, is the kind that don't have no oxygen. Yeah. Now, your soul, your suke, because Adam, right, the father of all mankind, rebelled against God, there's a genetic curse on the human race called sin. And the, the genetic curse on the human race called sin, guess what? The sin principle is fixated and operating in your suke, in your soul. So imagine that blood that has no oxygen being pumped throughout your entire body. The heart is made up of the soul and spirit. It's the place where soul and spirit meet. Part of your part of your spirit, excuse me, part of your heart, right, pumps red blood. That's oxygenized blood or oxygenated blood. That's the blood that your body uses. But guess what? After your body's used up all that life that's in that blood, it sends the blue blood back to the heart. Now I forget how I forget the different chambers. You know what I'm saying? I gotta I gotta go back and share that again. But you know what I'm saying? The Lord's just been reminding me of that, of the duality of the heart, like the dual nature of the heart. Mm -hmm. Now the interesting thing about uh 
there are certain aspects of the soul and spirit that are the same. But here's what we here's where we have to make a delineation for all you people that have taken psychology. You know what I'm saying? In in undergrad, we've all had to take it to get our degree, right? The world is wrong. The soul and spirit are not the same because Jesus said that he is alive and powerful and he's like a sharp two-edged sword and he divides asunder both soul and spirit. So if, so if Jesus is telling you that there's a delineation, more than likely he know what he's talking about. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, what, what you said is true. Yeah, but again, you have to bring the word of God into play to get people to say, wait a minute. Man says one thing, but let's see what the Bible has to say about it. And, you know, the Bible is the ultimate answer. Yeah, this, yeah, you know, so let me read, let me read a little something uh, out of Proverbs talking about it, because uh, you think of there's the different definitions. Um, you got the Greek word kardia or kardia. Exactly, yeah. Uh, however you want to say it. And that really means, that's, that's really the spirit of man, the heart of man. Exactly, yeah. It means it, it really means who you really are. In other words, the real me you can't see unless you see me in the spirit realm. Because this is just outer covering. It's just a husk. Shale. Yeah, it is because uh, as the first man, Adam, or we say it in English, Adam. Mm -hmm. Adam means from the earth. Now you know all of us know what when we die, what happens? We turn as dust to dust. We turn. <laughs> but then you gonna tell me that we ain't from it. That we ain't from it. The God didn't create us. Yeah, we fish from the sea. <coughs> yeah, the, the, you know, really? you know, lie again. Every time the old devil opens his mouth, he, he lies. lies. Yeah. Proverbs sixteen chapter says this: the preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is of the Lord. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord wears the spirits. What spirits? Wow. Yeah. I didn't know it said that. Wow. Yeah. This, this is the Proverbs. Dang. See? Yeah, that's Proverbs 16. 16 chapter. I just, I just read, I just read the first two verses. God says a whole lot about man and his heart. Ninth verse. A man's heart devises his way. But the Lord directs his steps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. See? Dang. Oh, yeah. <coughs> oh, yeah. That's not all I have to say in here <coughs> about, uh, about, a, about a person's spirit. <coughs> okay. What it says, in 18 verse says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Mm -hmm. Now, generally what we say is pride goes before a fall is generally how people <laughs> kind of condense it. Yeah, pretty good. <clears throat> Better be of a humble spirit with the lowly than the divided spoil with the proud. Look at the 21st verse. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, mm -hmm. and the sweetness of his lips increase in learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life and the him that have it, but the instruction of fools is folly. We're still about the heart condition. Mm -hmm. See, what's your attitude? How, how you feel about it? See? 25th verse, we've heard this. There's a way that seems right to a man, but you know, there are the ways of death. See, what are we talking about? Person heart. Mm -hmm. your, your motivation. What motivates you? What is in the heart of man? Is it do good or is it do evil? I put a post up about this scripture yesterday. Did you? About, um, I was seeing something about uh, somebody talking about something. They were deep, deep in sin. Mm -hmm. But then they would justify, oh, but he's such a good person. Oh, I remember you, what you yeah. put, because you said, uh, you, you, you put it there about how folks said, well, the Lord know my heart. Right. And, well, and you, he, he you said, yeah, it's person. evil. Yeah. Oh, I'm a good person. Yeah, I'm a good person. I'm a, yeah. Being yeah. morally good means nothing yeah. if you ain't in the will of God. Your righteousness is filthy rags. Right. And this scripture came over my spirit. Uh, Proverbs was 16 and 25. Mm -hmm. There's a way to seem it right unto a man. Of course, whatever you're trying to justify, whatever you're conjuring up in your mind, of course, is what you want to do. So it's right to your flesh. You're right. Yeah. It's like they say, it, it feels good to you, but it's not good for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's and that's the big thing because folks are good for saying so and so. I'm a good person, and I go like, well, who said that? I don't really go to church. Yeah, about what you know? Yeah, right. 
and we realize that man's standard is nowhere near God's standard. You know, and, that, and that's and that's the plumb line. Hmm. My daddy was a, my daddy was a pipe layer, and uh, he laid the pipe, the drainage pipe for highways and streets. And when he laid that pipe, daddy would take that plumb line. That plumb line, you run a line, and you take another line, you break down, and it's got this this weight on it. And daddy blew down that plumb line. And if it wasn't quite right, you had to either put some dirt on it to raise it up or take some dirt down to lower it. Yeah, you know, so it, it's like Jesus is a plumb line. The word of God is a plumb line because Jesus is the word. So put up what you're doing, put it against the plumb line. But you know, I said has to line up. Yep, got to line up. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, here a little, there a little, <laughs> and you can't get around it. And you and you tell people that you know, um, what's your motivation? You know, the biggest thing that the problem that I have had, and this is with my brethren. I'm talking about I'm talking about folk that's that's actually been called that God got His hand on. Paul talked about being amongst false brethren. But he wasn't always talking about Gnostics. He was talking about people whom God had called, but for one reason or another, they had left the faith. They were still, the, the war going on in their members, and they had succumbed. They had succumbed to what their soul wanted. They were succumbing to what their flesh wanted. Flesh wants strife. Stress, flesh wants malice. Flesh wants greed and jealousy. Flesh wants a mess. Flesh wants position. Flesh wants power. Flesh wants dominion. Flesh wants to oppress people and dominate them. But the kingdom of God is what? Peace, love, joy in the Holy Ghost. There's a vast difference. And that's what we're striving. We're striving to bring people into the kingdom. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. That's the question, but that's the answer at the same time. You have to work the kingdom while you're here. That's your challenge. That's my challenge. And what I'm saying unto you is, those of you who know that God has got his hand on, you need to band together. I tell people and I admonish them to get with like-minded people. Even if you're in a church of 50 or a church of 500. My, my phone. Um, find people who are like-minded, who are really interested in really getting into prayer. If you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, we need, we need to pray about you being baptized at night. Uh, everybody needs baptism in the Holy Ghost. I remind people, Jesus is the baptizer. John said, there's one who come after me whose shoes I'm not worthy of the latch. Hey, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And he was talking about his cousin, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Christ. Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. So anybody who wants to say that you're not supposed to have the baptism in the Holy Ghost, you don't know your Bible. Even when I have folk who want to fight me in it, when I quote that scripture to them, and they know it's in the Bible, everybody shuts up. It's all right if you don't speak in tongues. <laughs> it's all right if you don't do that spooky stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know, so that's what, and what gets to me is, why is it spooky? You know, and that bothers me. You know, they act like, well, it's the Holy Ghost. And then you, get, then you get the false doctrine. The Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost are not the same thing. Hmm. We had somebody say this here, and this person actually walked in the office of the prophet, but he, had, he didn't have any training at the time. So he did, He spoke it because he didn't have much training. Um, Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost are the same, same person. It's not a thing or an it. He's a real person. He's the third person in the Godhead. Jesus said, I'll leave. I'm leaving you now in person, but I'm going to leave the comforter, the paraclete, which means the one who walks, one who walks along beside you. He, he said, he you don't know, notice the way it's translated in English? You don't say it. Right. The reference is he. And a lot of us have made this, this 
uh, misnomer. And I'm, I'm saying that those of us who grew up in the church, our pastors generally refer to the Holy Spirit as an it. I found out that part of the reason that that um, that that people use that that wrong language is because the uh, like in that you know how the scripture that talks about praying in the Holy Ghost and says that the Spirit itself maketh intercession. But that's, that's a, a pronoun. Translation. Yeah. The reason, but the reason why they use that pronoun was because they're describing wind or breath. Mm -hmm. So okay. That, so that okay. So the, so they they, they also oh, oh, so they translated it as ruach. At that time, or Numa. A Numa, exactly. Numa, as yeah. breath. Exactly, rather than the he, like what you were saying. So they, they depersonalize it for the sake of, well, this is the same word we're using. But like what you said, now nah, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the, of the triune God. Like he's the third person. He's blessed the third person of the Trinity. He's a, he's a person. Yeah, and, and he's God, like God the Father, God, and God the Son. Exactly. See, that's the whole thing about it. The, again, yeah. misdirection, and you're throwing people off. See, this now we've made videos on this, but let me say this real, real, real fast. Here's how we know the doctrine of the Trinity wasn't created at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD because they had to read what God gave John the Apostle in order to come up with it. John, God already told John in the book of First John that there are three that bear a record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So it couldn't have been a Catholic invention 325 years later, mm -hmm. whenever God had him write the text that they were quoting, God said to John, be it on the island of Patmos or wherever, that there are three that bear a record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and it's three or one. That's not a Catholic invention. It's not an Egyptian in invention. Mm. I just, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. there's a lot of dumb stuff out there, man. It is, and it's, and it's tricking people, and we see it. You know, Jeez. people want to talk about the Egyptian aspect, about the Book of the Dead, and they want to say that that uh, a, a Madonna and a, a Immaculate Birth was right. part of that. But here's why I remind people, and we go right back to the to the source, the book again. You know, uh, this says prophecy, but let me let you see. It says Bible, okay. Um, Jesus told Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. I'm going to mess with your theology here for a minute. Go look it up in your Bible. He told them to go and replenish the earth. You cannot replenish something unless it has been replenished before. Remember the word Genesis means beginning. I'm going to mess with your theology tonight. I'm going to mess with the majority of y'all theology tonight. Genesis described the world as being dark, void. Mm -hmm. Void means what? Without, without absence. Mm -hmm. what is it, what's absent for, for a second? Wait a minute now. The earth was here, mm -hmm. but it was void. Yeah. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But then it says, and then the earth was without but, form. That, form. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now, wait a minute. It was void. But but he tells Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. So I remind people that was just our genesis. Right. And, that's, and I, I actually have spoken with Jews about this. Whenever they read Genesis and Torah, mm -hmm. they understand, like, it's translated to be in our beginning. God created right, heaven and, that, and that's and that's what it, that's our beginning. Our beginning. Yeah. That's our beginning. Yeah. It is obvious, and y'all can get mad at me and say it's the heresy. It's not. It's not because your Bible says replenish the earth. Anybody knows that that prefix re means to do again. See, sometimes we can't see the forest for the trees. You cannot replenish something unless it had been replenished. God had to have destroyed the earth before our beginning. He had to have. Yeah, because it was jacked up. <laughs> and consider how, and think about how wicked man was thousands of years ago. Right. They said, we're going to build a tower and we're going to go kill God. Go man. kill God. Man. <laughs> you know what I just thought about? If you go back to Genesis, when it says in the beginning, like to go with what y'all talking about right now, in the beginning, according to 
Because you got to remember, the Bible was written and given to us for here and now. But, you know, when it says in the beginning, uh, like you just said, it's according to our beginning. Our beginning. When it says the, it's it's related to our beginning. Yeah, the, but, the beginning we be dealing with. Yeah. Right. So if, going back to what you were saying, if the Lord told Adam and Eve to replenish the earth, you ain't even really got to pray and tarry on that. that mm -hmm. much. That's basic grammar. It, it, right. It's basic, it's, it's basic grammar. Yeah, right. It, it's, it's right there before you. It's, <laughs> it says, replenish the earth. Right. Replenish the earth. You go, wait a minute. He said, wait a minute. He told them to replenish the earth. And you go, like, well, wait a minute. That means somebody's been here before. So even though the earth was out with was without form of void in this beginning, mm -hmm. I get and and correct me if I'm wrong, but the context of void in that scripture, what I'm getting from it is something was taken out. Exactly. That that's see, and that's what the word void can mean. It means like a vacuum or something's been taken away. It it's not complete. There's a void there. Exactly. Just That's, like a contract being null and void. There was a contract. Yep. But, but because of a discrepancy, now it's void. Yeah, we, we voided it. Right. So so now it's what? No longer valid. But it did exist. But it did exist. Exactly. You're understanding it in the proper context. And that's how you... I told you I was going to mess with theology. I told you I was going to mess with your theology. <laughs> Say something to your pastor about it. Your pastor cannot say the Bible does not say replenish. Go Google it right now. Yeah, I'm looking at it. At blue, I'm at blueletterbible.org. That's the online concordance. Yeah. So, <coughs> see, I told him this is theology. Uh, I might not <laughs> quote scripture like some folk, but I have some biblical training. And I can come up with enough to make you stop and think about it. That's why I don't care about all these doctors and their PhDs and THDs. Because I know enough of it that I can talk with them. And I can I can ask them some questions and say, well, wait a minute. What does the word say about this? Half of them ain't got no power to back up what they say. No, that's true. That, that's true. But I can just ask them some basic biblical stuff yeah, and say, well, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They just want to go tip for tap yeah. hat. Yeah. It was funny while we were on break. At that uh, <coughs> gig I did in Charlotte two weeks, I, I told him about this, but I failed to mention this to you on mom. So everybody on the gig were Christians, and we were on break. And so, you know what I'm saying, I took out my Bible, you know, just not even knowing that they were Christians. And uh, the guitarists start talking about Matthew 24 and how we're living in that time, right? And uh, we were talking about Matthew 24 right before we got ready to hit. And I, you know what I'm saying? I was bringing out some things, particularly I was just talking about like the Western paradigm and how like that's what screwed up Christianity, you know what I'm saying? Giving the people like a lot of church history and factoids, you know what I'm saying, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the saxophonist actually got his seminary degree from the Bible college down there in Charlotte. I forget the name of okay. it or whatever. But he was asking me where I got my degree from. You know what I'm saying? Just But just saying that to say, it's like, yo, you study the Bible tell it admonishes us to study to show ourselves approved, workmen not need to be ashamed, but being able to rightfully divide the word of truth. You know what I'm saying? Like what Pop is saying, you once you get into this word and then God reveals what it really means to you, you can bang with anybody. It's like Yeah, because you can start throwing some you scriptures out there. Showing yourself approved. Exactly. Yeah, because <coughs> yeah, because yeah, because you spent time with him and what the Holy Spirit is the, the greatest teacher. Yeah. So, he, he's a great teacher. And that's what the, it says that we speak with the wisdom, not that man teacher, but with, with what the Holy Ghost teaches. That's the original Compared spiritual, spiritual things with, with spiritual. spiritual. Yeah. For example, this Bible is the autobiography of Jesus. Yeah. If you got the Holy Spirit, which is the one who wrote it, yeah. teaching you who the Bible, it is infallibly clear that you will know exactly what it's supposed to mean. So then... You can be like Paul. Hey, I come not to you with enticing words or man's wisdom, you know, or enticing speech or anything, but with demonstration you know, the spirit of the power. Of power. Yeah. And you can not only do that just with the power, but even the revelation that God gives you, yeah. he's giving you the original template. 
Well, the Bible says that Christ is both unto us the wisdom and the power of God. We it's funny how we're quoting like the first the first three chapters of First Corinthians. Like that's you just quoted the first part of uh of, of two. two. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we were dealing with uh <coughs> with one. My fault the first two chapters. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. But see that's the whole thing about it. When you start talking about the word, I tell people that's why I tell folks you ain't got a word in you. I know you you you, you <laughs> quoted me in that a few weeks ago, but it's true. It, 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 but but it, there should be a connection. Yeah. It's like it's like taking parts of a puzzle and putting them together, and you should be able to see where they where they connect, where they interconnect. You know, and, and a lot of people miss it. But see, that's when you have a rhema. Mm -hmm. That's when the word of God becomes quick and it becomes alive. It becomes a living entity. We're supposed to be walking living epistles. Mm -hmm. Epistle is just Greek word for letter. So we're supposed to be, remember, the Bible says, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. We are the church, not the building. Not the building. The building's not the church. We're the church. The people who have given their lives to Christ. We're the church. And people miss it. They get so full of religion, they miss it. <clears throat> okay, now that I've done mess y'all, mess y'all uh, theology up tonight. <laughs> but see, <clears throat> yeah, see, God, you, you, you got to think with the mind of Christ. You have to think with the mind of Christ, and you got to come out of religion and tradition. You have to see this for what it is. See, that's what these folks want to say. Uh, well, Christianity is copying. Uh, Egyptology and all these other cultures. Nope. They're actually copying this. God's been around a lot longer. Genesis is just our beginning. See, so there's a lot that we don't know. We were supposed to know, but men, evil men, who listen to Satan, destroyed stuff, distorted stuff, and we're getting back slowly but surely <clears throat> we're getting back there but you need the baptism in the holy ghost you, you need the comfort you need the teacher the bible says he will lead you and guide you into all truth so when he comes and you listen to him he will lead you and guide you in all truth um hmm, that's interesting that's interesting bashmara this sandra do so okay Hmm. I messed a lot of y'all minds up with that. That just messed y'all up by that replenished earth. And it's been there the whole time, is what you're thinking. Ain't no false doctrine. Because it's there. You know? And you can look it up <laughs> in the original text. Um, when you were talking about um, Egyptology and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and, um, I don't know, this is just real quick. The Lord brought up, uh, it's a dude named Brian Tatum. <coughs> uh -huh. His name is Brian Tatum. He's been dealing with like Egyptology or whatever. He was just like a lot of us. He was brought up in the Christian church. But because they didn't have no power, the pastor didn't know, you know, a whole lot of word. He stopped dealing with it. So he's been dibbling and dabbling. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't even really want to deal with Egyptology. It's just he doesn't really know where else to go. But the Lord is dealing with him mm -hmm. when I don't know if he's watching the video right now or if he's going to watch it in the archives. Mm -hmm. But he's definitely the Lord is really going to open up his eyes through this video tonight because he's never been. He's only been exposed to the to the letter. Yeah. And, and, and a, lot of, of, a lot of people have been. Um, he talked about I can't think of the young lady's name. Her, her parents are pastors, but they have no power. And um, that's what the problem is, you know. They, all the guys is a letter. Jesus himself says the letter killer. Right. The spirits make him alive. Because so, it's a sword. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, the whole thing about it is, is letter, who wants a dead letter? It's, like, it's dead. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, that's all they have. They don't have any unction. So nothing happens. But we believe that when we speak the word of God, that the word goes out and that the sound waves hit and that changes manifested.
I remind you that God is omnipresent. He just does not make his presence known everywhere. But that's because people are not invoking his name and calling on him in faith and actually having a relationship and ask him to usher in. Folk lie every Sunday morning and say, Holy Spirit, welcome. They lie. A lot of times they're just lying. They don't really want him there. He shows up and they do everything they can to try to usurp his authority. Flesh gets to moving around. They won't allow him to move like he's supposed to. He wants to bring the word for, at certain times. He wants to bring healing and restoration. And folk in charge mess the service up. This goes on everywhere. Hmm. And it certainly goes on in North America. Question. <clears throat> Do you think that you were saying that how it's not the, um, the building? You think that's too how the enemy is using because people in that building and that name, like the, the that name of that denomination, is how the enemy is throwing people off? To? Well, it's, it's, it's one of the ways this is happening because they think it's, they get to the church houses where everything supposed to be happening. But see, if you don't have any power within you, you that are members of a church, all you do is you get a bunch of empty folk together. And a lot of times they got all them demons. And you ain't got to be demon possessed. You can just be oppressed by them. Uh, and they can just be around. But then all these different demons that have been following families for generations, they come together while you're in the church house. <clears throat> it's possible for you to go home in a worse condition than when you came in. You know, I'm glad she asked that question because I was talking to somebody, I think it was earlier today. <clears throat> there are so many church folk who literally believe and are taught that the kingdom of God is doing kingdom where it's serving in your church. Yeah, they, they, like, yeah. I'm doing I'm doing the Lord's business because I'm a usher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they and they don't realize, you know, that's just one small facet of what's supposed to go on. It doesn't sit around the building, but a lot of folks think that's that's true, and that's why nothing gets done because what does it mean about go out to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in? Right. That's the kingdom. Work. That's the kingdom work. Is going out to compel people. I remind people, certain folk, they're not going to come to your church unless you do something on your job, at your school, at the grocery store, when you're at Belt. Uh, you know, if you are if you don't catch them when you're out, they're not going to make it to your church. Now, if you minister to them outside of your church, then they may be more than apt to show up because they saw. In other words, I come to you not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. When you start displaying it, because you know what? The Bible says that you're supposed to preach the word with signs following. That's, the, that's what the Bible says. I didn't say it. That's what your Bible says. But what happens is man don't want to live right, so he doesn't have any signs following, so he's not going to teach you that. That's it. You know, it you know, how you, yeah, so, you know how you I, can't, about it? I can't pray for the sick and get results. Because you know they're going to ask you about it. Yeah. About it. <laughs> yeah. Really yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I can't pray for the sick. Yeah. I can and, and get results. Yeah. So why am I gonna preach and teach all? Yeah. It's you like, know, my band sucks, so I'm gonna act like all music is bad. Yeah. I, I'm gonna say this. I'm not gonna mention the name, but y'all gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. So I was talking um, to this lady the other day. She had the eye surgery again, and now she's been seeing spots in her eye, mm -hmm. and now it's getting worse. And she came to me. Of course, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. She called the doctor and they basically just told her, well, listen, it was, I try not to laugh. I really did. And I didn't, but she said, the doctor told her, well, Hey, if you go blind then call us, what? <laughs> I'm serious. She had the laser surgery in her left eye, the second surgery in her left eye. And she started seeing like these bubbles and a bunch of spots. So she got scared, called the doctor immediately. She's like, what do I do? And the doctor literally said, well, hey, if you if it goes completely black or whatever, then call us. Well, here's the thing. The whole surgery, they told her before she had the surgery that, hey, 
It's not at all guaranteed that this is going to fix anything. The only thing we're doing is trying to stop the blood vessels from forming to kind of stop the bleeding. But you can still go completely blind. Now, because of who this woman is, of course, I don't want that to happen. But I said that to say this. She knows that not only do I pray for the sick, but we do. Number one. Number two. I just told her, uh, I think the day before she told me that, I prayed for this young lady who had uterine cancer. I told, I just prayed for this woman, and, and I'm watching God heal this girl. What are you doing? You know, it's, it's like, you know, I guess that's the other dynamic of it, though. Some deal with preachers who don't have any power, therefore they don't teach or preach on this stuff. But then the other part that the devil has, the other side that the devil has people bound in is when they come in contact with people who do carry signs after what they're teaching and preaching. And then they still refuse. You're about to go blind. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't even fathom in my mind how devastating that would be to me. And you still, <laughs> and, I, and all I said to her was this. I'm like, well, hey. You know exactly where to get help from. I said it just like that. And and I made sure. I said, well, hey, I just prayed for somebody with uterine cancer yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday. And I'm watching God heal them. I can pray for you. Or I told her more importantly, I'm like, hey, you know what days and times to show up. If you want the <laughs> problem solved, just show up. Well, all right. Well, okay. It's Wednesday. Where's she at? Home, I reckon. She at home in bed. Okay, yeah, you know, so, and, and, and that's, that's, and that's the thing, you know, it's like, I look at it and I go like, you know, you know, but the enemy tricking you that you, but, what's it hard? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. It is a condition of the heart because they know if they keep doing it, that they got to change. They know that's going to obligate them to keep thinking about changing and they don't want to change. But see, but you sick. And see, that that's sin sickness is what that is. Because mm -hmm. you won't do right. So God is allowing your body to be buffeted. It's one thing to be attacked by the enemy because you're striving for the kingdom. Whereas, no, you allow stuff to happen to yourself because you won't obey the Lord. You know, there's, there's a vast difference in that. And, you know, I, the enemy, though, I tell you, though, man, he, he's something. But I just pray that the heart, the heart will get right because um, it's all it is is to stop ministry. That, I mean, that's all that it is. And, and you know, um, <coughs> I told my wife, I told, told him earlier, I saw a dream I had years ago. I can't remember how long it's been. And it's really about, my family, my, my mom's family, and um, I saw where one of my cousins is really getting the understanding of uh, what the heritage really is. And they're understanding that and I, I wasn't, well, it could have been crazy because he knows folk, that he knows that God used him to do stuff, but he only has, my mom would say, get the straight of it. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's realizing that he saw a form of Christianity but it was really light in comparison to what's supposed to be happening in the family. He's, he, he, he's really seeing the gist of what it's about, and he's understanding why I'm anointed. So then that's probably also pointing the finger back to her, too, back to him, too, like, wait a minute, well, if he's doing something, I'm probably supposed to be doing something, too. See, and, that, and that's, that's, a, that's the stunning part is for him to realize, well, he, too, is a great-grandson of Joe Taylor. Mm -hmm. See, so it's it's like it's hitting it's hitting home. Mm -hmm. It's hitting home. He's realizing, well, wait a minute, if that's the reason why he's doing that, I'm his great grandson too. Mm -hmm. So 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 I'm it's up. yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. So like it's like it's like they realize, whoa, <coughs> yeah, generation of us is messed up. Mm -hmm. You know, and they think about man, we done fault them and. Mm -hmm. Ain't never asked to come preach in our church. Mm -hmm. That's a church with both sides of my family members. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, but, yeah. 
Yeah, my aunts, my aunts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but I'm just thinking bad niggas. Yeah, yeah. It's church of both sides of my family members. Yeah, two, two, two of my aunts on my on my daddy's sisters are members of that church. <laughs> it's a trip. I mean, you think about how the enemy has fought. A godfather was a pastor. Never asked me to come preach. See, people people don't realize that you know when you the persecution that you go through. But <clears throat> guess what? It's church folk that persecute you. It ain't just the world. It's church folk that persecute you. Yeah, my wife. Yeah, her godfather was a was a pastor, and he never asked me to come preach. Never. Not one time. And she allowed him the privilege of giving her away when we got married. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, so it's it's a trap. See, you, <laughs> you'll be persecuted for the gospel's sake. <clears throat> you'll be persecuted. The persecution comes. Um, the funny part about it, though, is like my folk are realizing, man, we're going to persecute him. He's the real thing. Mm -hmm. And he and he's in it because he found it. Yeah. <laughs> that makes us look real stupid. It does make yeah yeah that that's why he looked so outdone this morning in the dream. Hmm? Cause he did, he couldn't say nothing. Hmm. And I, I, I can say I done him like went and done you. He's I, hmm. I had him like this. Hmm. That's real. And I was saying he was my cousin, you know. Um, but uh, where's my mother and my father? Yeah, that's why Jesus said it. Hmm. That's the reason why. What did he say? He said, the enemy of a man would be what? Of his own, own household. Yeah. Probably is not worthy in his own house. Yeah. Yeah. Because all them people that crucified Jesus were his cousins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They were his cousins. Yeah. Yeah. They sold him out. Yeah. And that's why he told me you're not Abraham C. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the funny part about it is it's a part of it. But Guess what? I didn't call myself to preach the gospel. There are, <coughs> there are too many men and women, and they got degrees, but God didn't call them to preach. They can they can uh, give you a bunch of homilies and hermeneutics and, and craft sermons together. Mm -hmm. They can give you the enticing words of man's wisdom. They got no demonstration of the spirit and the power. Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, and, and they can hoop. Right, yeah. Jump on entertain. Some yeah. 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 yeah, they can Very entertain. Insane. Yeah, you know, so and they, they can pontificate, but uh, it won't do you any good because all you got is itching ears. Um, you need to be told something to make you think down on the inside, not just up here. I don't, you don't need intellectual stimulation. You need something to, to, to cut asunder some stuff and to rally you up on the inside and make you think twice about how you're living and what you want to do to evoke change. Um, rest assured, I did not give up doing what I, I was doing at 25 just to be doing something, just to be trying to be cute. I could have done other stuff. Um, it, it, it astounds me still how people have missed what God's been using me to do. But they've been, been presenting a false gospel. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's sending them to hell. God does not want you to go to hell. If you go to hell, it's your fault. God does not send anybody to hell. We got churches on every corner, but we don't have enough folk that's in the kingdom. Right now, you need to just fall on your knees or, or stand up or sit where you are and ask, ask God to forgive you for your sins. You sincerely do so. God will forgive you for your sins and you become part of the kingdom. If you're already a Christian, you need to ask God for the baptism in the Holy Spirit if you don't have it. You need you need to pray in tongues. You need to speak in, in tongues. You, and you need to speak in tongues. I mean, quite frankly, uh, I had to remind myself, I need to pray in tongues every day. Because you just don't know what's coming around the corner. And you just need to be ready. So we're getting ready to pray now. If you're sick, put your hand on the part that ails you or the parts. Being what's wrong with you, and we we'll believe the power of God will hit you. If, it's your, if, if you're having problem depression or you feel like the enemy is speaking to you, put your hands on your head. Like this <coughs> on your forehead. And uh, we're going to believe God's going to set you free.
uh, regardless of whatever it is in your body, God will heal you. God has no respect of persons. And the Spirit of God will manifest where you are. Um, <clears throat> you might be at work, makes no difference. Could be in a rest home, makes no difference. You could be in your car, makes no difference. God will manifest himself where you are and meet you at the point of your need. Father, we thank you again, Lord, for how the word is going forth tonight. Lord, I thank you that you are smarter than we are and that you know exactly what people need. Father, we just bind the spirits of intellectualism, Lord. We just bind Ishmael, the Sandra, or spirit out of a Sunday. We bind spirits of depression, Lord. We bind spirits of oppression, Lord. Ishmael, the Sandra, or spirit out of a Sunday day. Rosso, and then the Sabara, the Sandra, or spa. Ruben, and the out of a Sunday. And this is interesting, Lord. I, I see myself on 29 at the Walmart. So there must be some spirits in there that need to leave. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke and bind you, and I command you out. I'm over in the section, that that first aisle, as you come in on the grocery side on 29, over there by the deli section, right through there, I just rebuke every foul spirit there in the name of Jesus, and I just command clearance. Father, Eshmar, and Osir, and Sindida, Roman, and Diara, and Osir, and Osir, and out of a Sunday. Yes, God does show me things like that. Roman, and Diara, and Osir, 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 and Lord, I pray for my classmate, Lord. I believe this is the reason why Ishmael, the Sandra, or Spirit, under the Syrida. Robert S. and Ishmael, and Eric, the Lord, the Sandra, the Robert R. and the Sandra, or the Sandra, or Spirit, under the Robert R. and the Sandra, or the Sandra, or the Sandra, the Robert S. and Ishmael, and Eric, the Lord, the Sandra, the Robert Andre, the Sarah, the Sarah, the Sandra, or Spa. Roman and Riara, Dara, Dara, Sandra, O Spirit, Andre, the Sada. Robert Espira, Dara, Sandra, O Spira, Dara, and Sunday. Father, I rebuke all sickness, disease, and infirmity in the body. Father, I desibish, Bara, Dara, to be Sandra, O Spa. I bind Rolo Spira, the Sandra, O Spirit, out of a Sunday. I bind every skin disease, including skin cancer. Father, I just Espira, the Sandra, O Spirit, out of a Sunday. Father, I bind that Lord, somebody's been getting cramps, Lord, in their thigh, in their calves, and in their feet. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> in the name of Jesus, I just rebuke that. It could be Ishmael or Sande. It could be a, a calcium, uh, not calcium, but a, a, a potassium deficiency. But whatever it is, Lord, even if it's, even if it's demonic spirit, I bind it in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> and I command it to leave. Father, we just rebuke every unclean spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you would manifest yourself right now. Father, purge, 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 purge. Lord, we just rebuke every foul spirit, Lord, from Rocky Mount, North Carolina, in the name of Jesus. We just bind it right now. Father, we purge every Ishmael, and Sandra, O Spirit, under the Spirit, out of a Sunday. Robert, Sandra, O Spirit, under the blood of a Sunday, out of a day. Robert Espira died of a Sunday. Father, I bind those two people in the name of Jesus, Lord. Ashma, coming out of the Sunday. Lord, I bind that person, Lord, that I saw on Baker Street, Lord, in the house next door, Lord. The house Ishmael of a Sandra, no spirit out of that. Robert Espira died of a Sunday. Robert died of a Sunday. Father, I bind every foul spirit, Lord, with no spirit out of a Sunday. Robert S. Sandra, O spirit out of the Sandra, O spa. Robert S. Best, Mara, there to be out of a Sandra, Lord, I just rebuke and bind them in the name of Jesus, Father. We just bind every devil. We just bind it now in Jesus' name. Father, <coughs> Father, purge every elevator in the name of Jesus, Lord. Purge every staircase in the name of Jesus, Father. Purge every entrance. Every interest way, Lord, from all sides and all points in Jesus' name, Father. Go on every floor in the name of Jesus. Father, we rebuke every vex, every hex. Lord, we bind Ishmael, that Sandra, or the Sandra, no. Robert Espera, that Sandra, or the Sandra, no. Robert Eddie, that Sandra, or Shmara, that are by Sunday. Father, increase that rebuke in Jesus' name. Father, turn that thing around. Rosomara, the Sandra, or the Sandra, no. Robert Espera, the Sunday. 
Robert the spirit are the central Holy spirit are the back. Robert is the best married there to be at the Basandra. Robert is the Basandra Holy spirit are the Basandra. Father, I bind that a Leah that I saw the other morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bind that person I saw, Lord, with the leaves and the limbs. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Follow everything reverse on them sevenfold. Robert is Sarah, the central or the Sandra Holy spirit are the back. Robert this to be smart there to be at our Sandra or spire there on my Sunday. Father, I just rebuke and bind it up by Sandra or spirit out of a Sunday. Robert this to be smart there to be smart out of my Father, let there be a full reversal in Jesus' name. Rosso and Menendi, be sure they send the order out of a Sunday. Robert is spired there by Sandra or spired there in a Sunday. Father, let there be a full reversal, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the leading and moving of your spirit. Father, I just you can bind these people, Lord. I bind the enemy, Lord. I bind my enemies, your spirit, Lord. I bind them in the name of Jesus, Lord. I just rebuke and bind them, Lord. They have mocked you, 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 Lord. Lord, I bind that unclean spirit in the name of Jesus, Lord. I just bind every vex and every hex, Lord. Let it go back on them sevenfold. Let them find out, Lord. He shall have a Sunday, Lord. That I'm not just running my mouth, Lord, but that anointing and power, Ishmael, of a Sunday, shall prevail. Father, we just rebuke Renos Baradena Basande. Father, we cause doors that are closed to be open. It's forever. Close doors, Lord, that no man can open. Father, Renos Baradena Randra, O Sparadena Basande. Father, we thank you, Lord, for blessing. We thank you for opening doors. We thank you, Lord, Renos Baradena to be a Sandra over in the dark. Over there, Basande, Dasada. Father, we just rebuke that in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that conviction will hit people, Lord. Lord, nobody can be saved, Lord, so the Holy Spirit draw you. So, Lord, I pray. I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will draw her. Lord, I pray, Lord, let her stop thinking about that she's suffering in her body, Lord, from disobedience, from trying to do things her way, Lord. I just rebuke those spirits, Lord, that keep telling her to do things her way. Lord, I bind those generational spirits, Lord, that have been over my family, Lord, since my great-grandfather's time. Lord, his his sons, Lord, and my grandfather was the firstborn, Lord. They rebelled against their father and, and what he stood for in Christ. And ever since that time, Lord, the hand of blessing was on them, Lord, but it never got to full fruition because they did not serve you. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're shaking them up, Lord. I pray, Lord, that they will come to the conclusion that they need to repent. I pray, Lord, they will come to the conclusion, Lord, that they need to repent. Ishmael, the Sarah, the Sandra, or the Sandra, the Robert, the Sandra, or Spirit, Andrew, the by Sandra, though. Lord, I pray, Lord, that my cousin never go back to that man again, Lord, unless it's to tell them about Jesus. But I thank you, Lord, that you even allowed the devil to tell the truth. So now that they know and fully understand the covenant. And Lord, they, my cousin knows they have not walked in the covenant. They walked on a sum of it, but nowhere near what the covenant really was about. Ishmael, the Syria, the Sandra, or the Sandra Ospa. Lord, we bind those that have told lies for 35 years. Ishmael, the Basandra, or the Sandra Day. Father, continue to pull the veil back and pull the covers from off them. Lord, let every eye be uncovered, Lord. Ishmael, the Basandra, Father, we bind the spirit of, of strife and pride and jealousy and strife and malice and greed. We bind those spirits, Lord, that are running in our families in the name of Jesus. And we just rebuke, Lord, we rebuke the spirit of witchcraft, Lord. Because witchcraft is trying to manipulate and dominate people, Lord. And we rebuke those, Lord, who know stuff is not right. They're still trying to manipulate and have folk come together. That's not real family, Lord, and we will not be a part of that. Rosso, Menendri, Dasara, Descendido. Robert and Sandra Ored out of Basandra O Spirit out of Basande. And Lord, make that person think, Lord. I believe, Lord, they're under conviction. Lord, let them continue to stop and think, Lord. Let them realize they can't run things. It's not going to be their way. It's going to be right or it's just not going to happen. Let them see it. 
Let them know it. I believe, Lord, you're bringing it past, Lord. They're being shaken. Continue to shake them. Continue to shake them, Father, as only you can. And Lord, let them when the truth come out, Lord, let them hear what the truth is. They've listened to lies. The Lord, let them hear the truth. The Lord, there's something about when they folk hear the truth, they know it's the truth. And I believe, Lord, some of it is just denial. But we just rebuke every lying devil. And Father, pull the veil back. Ishma, Rosso, Ishmirana, Basarada. Ishmirana, Basor, Nisindra, Uradana, Basande. Rosso, Menindra, Dasabara, Dera, Basande. Father, I pray. Rodo, Oshmira, Desindra, Ora, Dasandra, Do. Robert Espera, Desindra, Ora, Dasandra, Ora, Dera, Dasandra, O Spirit, Andre Day. Robert Espera, Dara, Desandra, Ora, Dasandra, Desil. Rosamara, Desindra, Ora, Dara, Desindra, Day. Roso, Menindra, Dasora, Dasera, Dasande. Father, we just thank you. Rodo, Sora, Desindra, Dara, Do. Roso, Menindra, Dara, Dasandra, Do. Lord, I understand that while I'm saying that too. Rosa Mari, the Sindra Orda, Sandra Do. Robert S. S. Shimera, the Sindra Orda. Robert S. Samara, the Sandra Do. Rosso, Eminendri, the Biara, the Basande. Rosso, Eminendri, the Sabara, the Sande. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I'm on Fayetteville Street. Ha! Ha! Esha, Rada, Basan, in Durham, not in Raleigh. Ha! 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 the Sira, the Sandra Do. Rosso Menendiera de Serida. Rosso Menendiera de Serida de Sandra Day. Rosso Mara de Sandra Orida Sandra Do. Father, bind that lodge too, Lord, further down that street, downtown Durham. We just rebuke that in Jesus' name. Rosso Menendiera de Serida Sandra Do. Robo de Sandra Orida de Serida Sandra Day. Respira da Sandra Orida Sandra Ospa. Robo de Serida Sandra Orida da Sandra Day. Robert de Sandra she married Aaron Asandra do. Rosa Mara dera to be Sarah Rosa Basando. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Rada Basandra, O Spirit, Andra de Sarah da Rosa Basandra de. Lord, we thank you for provision. We thank you for making a way where there is no way. Father, continue to lead us and guide us in the all truth, Lord, as we listen to you, Lord, and we keep our eyes on you, Lord. We will not miss it. Help us read our sight tomorrow, dear Sita. Rosamara de Sindri de. Ishmara de Sira da Sandra or de Sandra do. Rosomen Indri era de Sira da Sandra de. Ishmara da Sandra or da Sandra de. Rosomen Indri era de Sira da Sandra de. Lord, read our sight tomorrow, dear Sandra do. Ishmara de Sira de Sira da Sandra do. Well, it's like I saw a great big thing of water was being set down on top of like an igloo chest. It's this big case of water. I felt it. Let that be a complete reversal. Excuse me. Oh boy. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Wow.
what I'm, I was saying. And I saw that. It's like I grabbed it and just went like that. <laughs> and I felt it when it happened too. I felt that big case of water. Um, it's it the one I saw it was the one that had the um, the larger bottles, but they had the little plastic rings mm. attached to all of them. Mm. Mm. That's, that's definitely a different anointing. That's got to be a certain refreshing. That's what water is. Mm. Uh, it's a different. It's a different unction than it was with uh, Sunday. It's, it's different. That's interesting within itself. Uh, mm. Mm -hmm. When you were praying about the family, I saw a shockwave like hitting cats. It was weird. It was like I saw this black, it was a silhouette. Mm -hmm. But like I saw it go down. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. Yeah, because I saw my cousin. He was in shock this morning. Mm -hmm. He just had a shock look on his face. That's real. Yeah. 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 Like the dude broke it down. He just broke it down to him. Yeah. He broke it down to him. And it, he really understands now. He didn't have an understanding. Ryan, when you, as soon as you said it, well, it's like the Lord was showing me the spirit. It was like I was coming from the left side of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And I went in that door, and right before you said it, I, all I saw was the, the produce section. <clears throat> that section right there, straight to the left, as soon as you walk in, and then you said it. All I could see it was like I wasn't able to see the spirit clearly. I just saw like a black shadow going in and out of the house. Mm -hmm. And then I also saw it leave too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this saw it was like I was coming from the back where the frozen food stuff was. It was walking down that aisle is how I, that's the perspective I had. You had it coming in, I had it like I was on my way going toward the front. Um, it was, it was, it was, I just saw the presence of the devil. So many people go in and out of that store. And that's what I'm saying, you know, you, you walk into, you walk to stores, man, you, I'm discerning spirits, and you know, I can't even go in there shopping piece. I had to go in there rebuking the devils. It's like that with me riding the buses. Man. Yeah, the bus could be a trip too. Nah, it's, it's crazy. It is crazy. Yeah, you know, you tell people, people have no idea. When you can see in the realm of the spirit that you a lot of stuff's going on, and here's what folk don't know: you can't discern. But did you somewhere in all of a sudden you start feeling bad? And see, you get a funny taste in your mouth. Yeah, you start feeling mm -hmm. feeling sick. Yeah. You feel funny. Sometimes you get another stuff on you. You get the sickness. You pick up something from that kind of stuff that goes on. Plus, so the people have no idea what really goes on in the spirit realm. Um, and the thing. That Crazy part about you can't turn it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a trip because you know, close your eyes and watch it. It's still gonna be. Yeah, it's still gonna be there. That's right. And sometimes you don't have any peace until you start praying and binding it. Right. Yeah, and you, and you have to bind it the and you whole can't time. Stop praying to break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing, but it's really not funny. And this morning, with um, Jessica called me this morning about six something. And uh, got a little bit more of a breakthrough this morning. Lord is uh, revealing to me piece by piece of 